Step into the magical world of a classic 1960s TV series that captivated audiences across the nation bewitched. This sitcom, a delightful blend of humor, and the supernatural centers around a witch named Samantha, who tries to live a normal life as a suburban housewife. Now, hold on to your broomsticks because we've got some funny, shocking, and even a bit sad facts about the show that you won't want to miss. So, keep watching this video. Have you ever found yourself reminiscing about a particular moment from this beloved series? Maybe it's the mischievous twitch of Samantha's nose or the quirky antics of her magical family. Share your cherished memories in the comments below because we'd love to hear your stories. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this timeless TV gem? We're all ears and wands here, ready to immerse ourselves in the nostalgia of Bewitched. So spill the beans in the comments. Get ready for a trip down memory lane as we uncover the delightful and surprising facets of Bewitched. Your laughter, shock, and maybe a tear or two are all part of the journey. Keep those anecdotes coming and let's celebrate the magic together. Bewitched is a TV sitcom from the mid-1960s that ran for eight seasons. The premise, centered around a witch named Samantha Stevens, was often repeated throughout the series. Despite Samantha's magical abilities, the show primarily focused on her suburban life and interactions with her neighbors. Some viewers felt the show lacked substance, criticizing its repetitive nature and missed opportunities for more meaningful storytelling. Additionally, there were discrepancies in the cast listing, with some viewers noting that Agnes Moorhead did not appear in all episodes as stated. The departure of actor Dick York due to health reasons also impacted the show's quality, as his replacement, Dick Sargent, was not as well received. The later seasons were criticized for recycling storylines, and the loss of key cast members, such as Marion Lorne, further affected the show's dynamics. Despite its initial success, the show's later seasons struggled to maintain the charm and originality of its earlier episodes. Overall, while Bewitched had its moments, it failed to sustain its initial appeal over its lengthy run. In the TV series about witches, many of the female characters' names ended with the letter A. Examples include Samantha, Endora, Esmeralda, Clara, Agatha, Enchantra, Serena, and Tabatha. However, there were exceptions like Abigail Beecham, Elspeth, and Mary. One of the actors from the series, Marion Lorne, also appeared in a famous 1967 film called The Graduate. It's interesting to note that she acted alongside Alice Ghostly, who later took on a similar role as a clumsy witch in the same series. The house featured in the series had a unique garage built in the early 1960s. This garage, with its distinctive gable roof, even appeared in older movies like a blondie film from the 1940s where a character changed a tire beside it. The connection between Mary and Lorne, Alice Ghostly, and the garage adds an extra layer of interest beyond the magic of the series. These details provide insight into the wider world of entertainment, where familiar faces and memorable settings leave a lasting impression. In the French translation, the title is Ma Sorcière by Anne Amie, which means My Beloved Witch. This title is shown in the opening cartoon. Neither Samantha's nor Darren's parents attended their wedding. Darren met Endora in Season 1, Episode 4, Mother, Meet What's-His-Name, and Morris in Season 1, Episode 10, Just One Happy Family. Samantha first met Darren's parents in Season 1, Episode 14, Samantha Meets the Folks. Originally, Alice Ghostly played a different character named Naomi, causing chaos at the Stevens. In Season 2, Episode 17, Made to Order, she helps with a client dinner at the Tate's because their maid was sick. The Tate's usual maid's name was Esmeralda. Mary and Lorne, known for her role in the series, had a unique hobby of collecting antique doorknobs, which was reflected in her character, Aunt Clara. The props department often utilized her collection for the show. The witches in the series referred to ordinary humans as mortals, but this term doesn't precisely fit as it implies immortality. Despite this, the show depicts witches aging and deteriorating over time, indicating they are, in fact, mortal beings. After Elizabeth Montgomery's initial contract ended, she decided to pursue other projects. However, to keep the series going, the network offered her part ownership, allowing her to earn millions through syndication and paychecks. In the series, Elizabeth Montgomery had a better on and off-screen chemistry with Dick Sargent during the last years of the show's run. They even stayed connected until Sargent's death in 1994. The Stevens home's exterior and interior set was also used as the home of Dr. and Mrs. Bellows and I Dream of Jeannie. When Dick Sargent took over the role of Darren Stevens' Dick York, who left the show at the end of the fifth season, didn't mind his playing the role. Crafts and interior design books inspired by the TV series have been written by Casey Rogers, who found success in capturing its essence in her works. 
interestingly, in non-English dubs of the show. The laugh track is notably absent from the sound mixes. In 2005, Rob Fulton clinched the top prize on the Australian version of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire with it playing a pivotal role. When faced with a million dollar question about the premiere of popular 60s TV shows, his astute observation led him to lock in his answer as the show, ultimately securing his victory. This success story underscores the lasting appeal and cultural significance of the TV series. In the world of TV shows, some houses aren't just places to live, they're like the actors on stage. Imagine a home where the magic of television happens, where the rooms transform into the set of a famous show like Brian's Song. Back in the beginning, there were rumors among the actors and crew. They weren't sure if everything would work out like a spell waiting to be cast. Agnes Moorhead, a seasoned actress, had some doubts about the scripts. But she kept quiet, maybe out of respect for the director, William Asher, who was married to Elizabeth Montgomery, the main star. At the start of the show, there were whispers of making changes. Samantha, the main character, almost had a different name, Cassandra. It was just an idea tossed around during brainstorming, and eventually they stuck with Samantha. But in the original draft of the first episode, you could catch a glimpse of what might have been. Creativity is like a dance between what could happen and what actually does, with every choice shaping the story. And in this story, the Stevens house was like a silent observer, the backdrop for the magic of Bewitched, painted with skillful strokes. So, Bewitched became a part of TV history, with its characters staying in people's hearts for years to come. And in this tale of magic and mischief, you can hear faint echoes of what might have been, even though it was never meant to be. In a surprising turn of events, Marion Lauren passed away just 10 days before she had a chance to win an Emmy for Best Supporting Actress in a Comedy Series. Her absence added a mix of sadness and accomplishment to the show. Dick York's back pain troubles started after a mishap while filming a Gary Cooper Western. This incident marked the beginning of a tough journey for him, leading to a struggling career overshadowed by pain and addiction. On a brighter note, David White's commitment to the series is evident in his presence in 188 episodes. While he didn't surpass Elizabeth Montgomery, who appeared in all 254 episodes, White's contribution was notable, even if it often went unnoticed. These behind-the-scenes stories give us a glimpse into the challenges faced by the cast of this beloved series. In the world of television, the actors and actresses on this show had a special job. Unlike nowadays when the costume department picks out clothes, these actors chose their own outfits. They got advice beforehand on what to wear and showed up on set dressed accordingly. Casey Rogers, someone important from the show, did more than just act. She wrote a cookbook called The Bewitched Cookbook Magic in the Kitchen with her friend Mark Wood in 1996. This cookbook gave fans a way to connect with the series through food. Contrary to what many people think, Dick Sargent wasn't the first choice for the role of Darren. The creators, William Asher and Elizabeth Montgomery, actually preferred Dick York for the part. It was only when Tammy Grimes was being considered that Sargent came into the picture before Asher and Montgomery joined the show. In the world of Bewitched, the actors picked their own clothes, Casey Rogers wrote a cookbook, and the casting choices had some surprising twists. These things make this classic TV series stand out. In the realm of classic TV shows, there's one that stands out for its blend of humor and magic. It's filled with memorable characters like Larry Tate and Dr. Bombay, played by David White and Bernard Fox, respectively. Agnes Moorhead, known for impressing Joan Crawford, delivered a stellar performance as Endora. This show wasn't just about laughs and spells, it also touched on important issues of its time. It became incredibly popular, influencing not just TV, but also fashion and language. Even today, it remains a favorite among audiences, proving its timeless charm. It's a show that entertained, made us think, and left a lasting mark on television history. Throughout its run, the show featured many talented actors who left a mark on viewers. One memorable moment involved Paul Lind playing a jittery driving instructor guiding Samantha through her driving lessons, bringing humor to the screen. Another standout figure was Morris Evans, who played Dr. Bombay. He became one of the longest lasting cast members, second only to Bernard Fox. Evans's consistent presence on the show deserves recognition for its significance. Additionally, Erin Murphy kickstarted her acting career through her role in Bewitched. Her journey from the show to broader entertainment marked a significant milestone in her life as an actress. These examples highlight the various talents showcased in the series and the lasting impressions left by its cast, adding to its enduring legacy. In Bewitched, the Tate family had a son named Jonathan, who was a few months older than Tabatha, but was only seen occasionally. 
Agnes Moorhead was chosen to play in Dora after a chance meeting with Elizabeth Montgomery and William Asher at a Bloomingdale's department store. Darren and Samantha Stevens lived at 164 Morning Glory Circle, Westport, Connecticut. The Stevens house still stands on the Warner Brothers Ranch lot in Burbank, California at Hollywood Way. The house remains largely unchanged since the show ended production and is frequently featured in other television series, movies, and commercials. Agnes Moorhead, having developed a strong working rapport with Dick York, found the replacement of York with Dick Sargent to be unsettling. On Sargent's inaugural day on set, Moorhead, addressing the entire cast, asserted her displeasure with the change, stating slowly, but firmly, I don't like change. Dick Sargent, on the other hand, had a peculiar relationship with his glasses during Bewitched shoots. Despite wearing them only during rehearsals, he often found himself not needing them when the cameras were rolling for the actual scenes. Amidst the third and fifth seasons of Bewitched, Elizabeth Montgomery, alongside co-star Aaron Murphy, grew increasingly concerned for Dick York's health. York's serious health problems prompted him to depart from the sitcom after the fifth season. In the dynamic of Bewitched, these behind-the-scenes intricacies added a layer of complexity that echoed the challenges of change, health struggles, and the interpersonal dynamics within the cast. During its original run, the show featured animated opening credits that changed each season to include the current sponsor. These sequences, which are now omitted in syndication, typically began with a cartoon of the sponsor's logo accompanied by a voiceover stating Chevrolet presence. After the credits, there was a brief cartoon ad for the sponsor. As a result, only three unique copyright years appear in the opening credits, 1964, 1966, and 1969, corresponding to different seasons of the show. Running for eight seasons, Bewitched was the longest running of the fantasy sitcoms that were popular in the mid-1960s. It was also the last surviving example of its genre when it concluded in 1972, marking the end of an era dominated by such shows. Protests arose prior to the show's premiere, particularly in Bible Belt states, where some viewers feared it would promote devil worship. After Irene Vernon's association with producer Danny Arnold, she was let go from the show after its second season. The decision was made by the Ashers, who had parted ways with Arnold after the first season concluded. In the initial six years of the show, nearly every car featured on screen was a Chevrolet. This was a deliberate choice, as the car company served as one of the original sponsors of the series. Elizabeth Montgomery, the lead actress, faced unique challenges during the production. During the filming of the pilot episode, I Darren take this witch, Samantha, she was two months pregnant with her first child. Following a brief maternity leave, she returned to work just two months after giving birth to resume filming the first season. Similar situations unfolded in the second season and the sixth season where Montgomery took maternity leave and resumed work shortly after giving birth to her second and third children, respectively. At the age of 36 on June 17, 1969, Montgomery gave birth to her youngest child, a daughter named Rebecca Elizabeth Asher. These behind-the-scenes dynamics and production choices shaped the trajectory of the series, influencing both casting decisions and subtle details like the prevalence of Chevrolet cars in the show's early years. Sol Sachs, the creator of the series, detailed in his memoirs that Elizabeth Montgomery and William Asher, brought together by their agents, initially sought a project to collaborate on. Their original concept revolved around a young woman inheriting wealth, but they pivoted to the bewitched premise, finding it aligned with their ideas. The show's core, as outlined in the Bewitched Bible, didn't intend to emphasize magic or witchcraft. Instead, it drew parallels to a working-class man marrying a woman of substantial means. Set in the early 1960s, the husband insisted on maintaining a modest lifestyle, eschewing reliance on his wife's inherited wealth. Essentially, the series delved into the challenges faced by a conventional man adhering to societal norms after marrying a more powerful woman, with the magical element serving as a clever, secondary aspect for the scriptwriters. The series concluded its first run on March 25, 1972, with the airing of the Season 8, Episode 26, titled The Truth. Nothing but the truth, so help me, Sam. The last ABC primetime telecast occurred on July 1, 1972, featuring a rerun of Season 8, Episode 14, titled Adam, Warlock, or Washout. Erin Murphy, widely known for her role in a famous TV show, has been making personal appearances since 1997. She has a cool collection of bewitched memorabilia, which adds a personal touch to her interactions with fans. George Tobias, who played Abner Kravitz, shared the screen with notable actors like Gary Cooper and Sergeant York. 
Jim Backus was first considered for the role of Ed Nurkravitz, but he said no because he had commitments on another popular show, Gilligan's Island. These actors played a big part in making the series successful and had a lasting effect on television history. In the world of classic TV, there's an interesting link between two famous shows from the 1960s. The creator of one show lent a hand in getting the other off the ground. The opening scene of the second show, where a character emerges from a bottle, was inspired by the first show's opening. The catchy theme song of the first show never actually appeared in the series, but it was recorded by some well-known singers. Initially, the producers of the first show considered using a song from a musical as its theme, but went with an original one instead. Another noteworthy point is how two characters from the first show share similarities with characters from the second show. Though it's not confirmed, it seems like one character filled the role of another. Both characters had magical abilities, leading to some tricky situations for the main character to deal with. The series introduced the concept of an estranged couple to network television. Samantha's parents, Morris and Endora, were portrayed as married but separated throughout the entire run with a strained relationship. The final black and white episode aired in season two, titled Prodigy. Initially, the lead character was planned to be named Cassandra before settling on Samantha. The studio considered Tammy Grimes for the role, but she declined misunderstanding the premise of the show. She thought her character would have powers to stop wars and traffic. In their initial wedding on screen, neither Samantha nor Darren had their parents present. It wasn't until later in the first season that the audience got to meet them. And Dora made her entrance in episode 4 titled Mother, Meet What's His Name, followed by Morris in episode 10, Just One Happy Family. Darren's parents finally appeared in episode 14 titled Samantha Meets the Folks. In an interesting twist, Mercedes McCambridge, who portrayed Carlotta in season 5 episode 4, Darren Gone and Forgotten, shared her first name with the character. Born Carlotta Mercedes Agnes McCambridge, the actress's first name aligned with her role in that particular episode. The show secured additional sponsors beyond its core narrative. Noteworthy companies like Clarol, Kodak, Reynolds Aluminum, and Bristol Myers Drug also contributed to supporting the series. These behind-the-scenes details provide a glimpse into the dynamics of the show, from the delayed introduction of key characters to the subtle incorporation of an actor's actual first name into their on-screen persona. The inclusion of various sponsors reflects the show's commercial success and the diverse brands associated with it.